Did you know that some everyday foods and drinks might be quietly chipping away at your bone strength? Today, we're diving into three surprising culprits that could be weakening your bones without you even realizing it. So stick around to see if any of these foods are in your daily diet and then learn how to protect your bone health. Hello, I'm Sarah and I'm a nutritional health coach through the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. I'm also a 500 hour trained yoga teacher with additional training that's specific to osteoporosis and yoga. I'm also a BoneFit certified fitness instructor. I'm on a mission to reduce the number of osteoporotic fractures that happen each year. And I am glad to have you join me in the journey to better bone health. First on our list, is cola drinks. Cola drinks are bad for our bones, even more so than other types of soda pop. A fascinating study at Tufts University led by Kathleen Tucker, the Director of Epidemiology and Dietary Assessment Program at the Jean Mayer USDA Human Research Center on Aging, explored the link between soda consumption and bone health. Interestingly, women who drank more soda weren't necessarily consuming less calcium than those who drank less. However, their overall calcium intake, including non-dairy sources like dark leafy greens, that was found to be lower. On average, women in the study consumed around 1,000 milligrams of calcium each day, while men averaged around 800 milligrams. Both of these numbers are slightly below the recommended 1,200 milligrams for adults over the age of 50. For the Framingham Osteoporosis Study, Tucker and her team analyzed dietary questionnaires and bone mineral density measurements at both the hip and the spine in over 2,500 participants. They discovered that women who drank more cola had lower bone mineral density at the hip, regardless of their calcium and vitamin D intake, their age, their menopausal status, how much alcohol they consumed, or their smoking habits. Tucker explained the more cola the women drank, the lower their bone mineral density was. Notably, cola consumption didn't seem to affect men's bone mineral density at the hip, or bone mineral density at the spine for either men or women, suggesting something unique about the impact of cola on women's hips. At any rate, I don't think it's worth the risk to our hips, and I suggest avoiding cola drinks to improve bone health. Instead of cola, you might try out a flavored form of a carbonated water that doesn't have sugar or another type of soda. One of my personal favorite sodas in moderation is Martinelli's Sparkling Apple Juice. This is one that my family of origin bought at holidays and it makes me feel nostalgic like I'm a little kid again. It's important to keep sodas to small servings and something that happens on rare occasion rather than a regular event because of the sugar that's in them. And speaking of sugar, that's what's next on our list of foods to avoid with an osteoporosis diagnosis. All right, second, let's talk about sugar. Sugar is bad for our bones, period, it just is. One of the bad things that sugar does for our bones is to create a spike in insulin, the hormone that regulates our blood sugar. When we have chronic insulin spikes, then our bodies produce higher levels of cortisol. Higher levels of cortisol cause bone loss because higher levels of cortisol make it so that our bodies don't actually absorb calcium as well as they should. This means that we lose calcium in our urine that should have gone into our bones. Over time, this can mean that our bodies have to raid our bone storehouses and take calcium out in order to maintain our nerve and muscle functions. Refined sugar has no vitamins or minerals, which means it has absolutely no nutritional value. The average American consumes 150 pounds of sugar every year, which makes up about 20% of an adult's daily caloric intake, or an average of just over 40 grams of sugar per day. So, the American Heart Association actually recommends that men shouldn't consume more than nine teaspoons or 36 grams of sugar per day, and women shouldn't consume more than about six teaspoons or 25 grams of sugar per day. 
But what's the significance of letting sugar be 20% of our daily caloric intake? If we're consuming 20% of our daily calories in sugar, then that means that we're getting 20% less of the vitamins and minerals that we need for bone health. Things like calcium, vitamin D3, magnesium, phosphorus, and zinc. The end result of too much sugar consumption is that we have greater bone loss. This means that for bone health to improve, we need to monitor our sweet tooth. This doesn't mean that you should avoid all forms of sugar forevermore. It just means that moderation is a really good thing. A little bit's okay, but a lot is not. So a little bit of raw honey can actually help to reduce inflammation, and it functions as a prebiotic that feeds the healthy bacteria in our guts. When our guts are healthy, our ability to absorb all nutrients is better. Raw honey in small amounts makes a wonderful addition to salad dressings. Another form of sugar that has nutrients that are good for our bones is black strap molasses. This is the kind that you have to go to the health food store to get, not the kind that's sitting on most grocery store shelves. It has a strong and slightly bitter flavor, and if you haven't had it before, it can be a bit of an acquired taste. Molasses was actually the preferred sweetener in Europe until the early 1900s when the price of refined white sugar dropped and made it the least expensive option. You can use blackstrap molasses when you do your holiday baking, but blackstrap molasses mixed with applesauce, bananas, or dates can actually make a really delicious combination for providing some sweetness in baked goods. Another more regular way to consume blackstrap molasses is to add one tablespoon of blackstrap molasses to a smoothie. The nutrients that are in one tablespoon of molasses might surprise you. One tablespoon of molasses, blackstrap molasses, includes 10% of the daily recommended amount of calcium, making one tablespoon of blackstrap molasses worth eating in my opinion. But there's more. One tablespoon of molasses also has 10% of the daily recommended amount of magnesium, which is another nutrient that our bones need. It also has 20% of the daily recommended iron, 8% of the daily recommended vitamin B6, and 9% of the daily recommended potassium. That packs a punch. Third on our list of things to avoid is too much alcohol. Too much alcohol is bad for our bones. Moderation is a really important concept with everything that we're talking about today, but especially so with alcohol. Alcohol has some direct negative impacts on our bone health for both men and women. When a person drinks alcohol, it reduces how much vitamin D gets activated by the liver. Our bodies need a certain amount of vitamin D to be able to properly absorb calcium. So if a significant amount of alcohol is consumed, say more than two drinks, it limits the amount of calcium that's absorbed by the body. Alcohol also tends to slow down production of our bone building cells, and at the same time, it increases the amount of cells that we have that are busy breaking bone down. This is not a good scenario for our bones. Alcohol also has a negative effect on our hormones. It increases the amount of cortisol in our bodies, which means less calcium absorption. That, combined with less vitamin D, is a double whammy. For men, too much alcohol reduces testosterone, which is the hormone for men that largely controls bone formation, putting men who drink significant amounts of alcohol at a distinct risk for bone loss. For women, alcohol lowers the amount of estrogen in our bodies, which has a significant hormonal impact on the bone density for women. Recently, I came across a really well done blog post written by someone on the Healthy Bones Company website. The blog post talked about the damage that comes to young women from drinking too much alcohol. Me being me, I had to go look for the studies that were mentioned in the blog post. I'll link to both the study and the blog post in the description for this video, along with my other references. The blog post talked about how young women who are college age and also binge drink set themselves up for bone loss. When you stop to think about it, this really makes sense because women in their 20s are still in their peak bone building period. Peak bone mass is reached by about age 30. 
When you consider how alcohol affects vitamin D production, calcium absorption, bone formation, and breakdown, and also how it affects our hormones, alcohol has the potential to interfere with and significantly lower the amount of bone that's formed during the window for peak bone formation. This makes the effects of too much alcohol consumption worth sharing with the young women in your life that you know and love. Teach them now about bone health so that they can be better prepared and so that they don't have to experience significant bone loss and fractures that can accompany it. Alcohol also impacts balance and it increases the likelihood that someone could have a fall. When someone falls, they increase their chances for having a fracture, but also for incurring other injuries. I have a dear friend who felt dizzy and then had a fall that led to having a brain bleed out where she spent the next week in the hospital. And after that, she had decreased cognitive ability. We want to reduce our chances for having falls, fractures, and injuries in general. Our bones and our bodies benefit from reducing the amount of alcohol that we consume. You may even want to avoid alcohol altogether. The choices that we make and the foods and drinks that we consume have an impact on our bone health. Eating refined sugar, drinking cola and alcohol are all bad for our bones. Together, let's make better choices so that our bones and our bodies can flourish. There are a number of resources in the description for this video, and I encourage you to check them out for yourself. The more that you know, the better your choices have the potential to be. And then if you found this video helpful, please share it with someone that you know and love. And on that note, I look forward to speaking with you soon.